See that one? So now, I'm sure you guys know about the uh, horizontal and vertical versus slant 45 configurations here. Um, so we're going to show you how to do an RF elements uh, twist port adapter for slant 45. Now the only times I recommend this is with backhauls. You don't want to do this on your uh, point to multi points as your point to multi point radios are not going to be orientated that way. So you see what we got here? That's horizontal uh, vertical and that one is slant 45. Now you have to do this here and you have to do it on the back of that dish over there. So we're going to do both. I'll show you how to do that just now. There we go. Alright, so we're going to take out our screws here. And I always advise when you're taking this shit apart, keep a close eye on the way that it's supposed to look inside. That is very, very important because if you forget how this is supposed to go back together, which you shouldn't because it's pretty simple, then uh, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Oop. My greasy fingers. It's like 35 degrees out here today. All right, what do we got here? Two. Four. Last one wants to stay in there. There's always one that's a troublemaker. Troublemakers are made to disappear. There you go. Six. So now we can take off the housing here. Now take a close look at the way that the uh, patch leads are here, the RF. And you'll see that uh, how they're orientated in there. You want to kind of copy that. But realistically, it's simple enough. You just carefully lift her out. And I just kind of lift her aside. Now if you look inside there, let me get a zip tie as a pointy tool. You see how it says HV right there? And there's like a key. So that's keyed in for horizontal vertical, which is your standard 90. And over here, you've got your slant 45 tab. Ha! Ah, you did a great job there, Tassos, on your design. So uh, let's take some screws out. So this is the base of the waveguide. This is the waveguide and the uh, elements that we're taking apart right now. I just realized that's kind of a clever play on terms. RF elements. No shit. Alright. So we're going to take these screws out here. We're going to carefully take this out. We don't want to wreck it. And I'm going to put this right here. So now here you see your S45 there. I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife here. I'm going to break it out. I'm going to make sure that it's flush. And so long as it's flush, we can now reseat this. So there's your key right there, little bump. And you simply drop her back in. You'll notice there's another set of screw holes here. Let me just uh, carefully get that out of the way because you don't want to fuck up your leads. And so now we're seated in slant rather than HV. So now, we'll just put the screws back in. I'm going to put the ones in on either side to make sure that, uh, and by the way, all these screws are pretty much the same. The only difference, oh, they are actually all the same, so RF elements are very clever in the sense that all the screws for the plastics are exactly the same. You other manufacturers that uh, allow people to monkey with your shit need to follow suit and use all the same screws. This is just intelligent design. You know, you might want to say it's the intelligent design, huh? Huh? That's right. It's almost like you might say that the guys at RF Elements might be godlike, maybe. Not that I'm stroking any egos or anything. Send me more t-shirts, Tassos. And uh, here we go. All right, so we're just gonna, we've got them in there. I'm just gonna snug them. You don't wanna crank shit with plastic, otherwise you're gonna break your threads, and then you're fucked. All right, so now, verify. Now we wanna be careful when we put this back together not to wreck our patch cords. So we know that these guys go in like so. So I'm gonna pinch them into the center like that. There we go. And then these guys just tuck in like so, just very, very nicely. Don't don't manhandle it. You don't want it to be dainty. See? Just nice little guide down and in. And you can see that that's nice and clean now. And then we can put the cage back on. It goes on over top like so. And you'll see that the RF leads are protected again. Pretty cool, eh? 
This whole thing's being uh, filmed on a shitty Samsung Galaxy S8. I apologize if the video and audio sucks because Samsung sucks. Here we go. Start putting the screws back in. It's that simple. And then we'll do the dish in just a second. <laughs> Well, this is a reminder, I did a post a little while ago. Uh, if any companies want to see their uh, company logos in any of my videos, simply sell me a, a, or send me a XL shirt. Unless it's from America, then you want to send me a large, because I think a American large is the same as an international extra large, so. I will wear your shirts in my videos. There we go. So that's that. Now we got to put the radio on here. That's an entirely different story. We got to put the GPS antenna up here, wrap it. I'll show you that after. But first things first, let's get the dish prepped. Dish that's for slant 45. Oh, and look at that. For all you dough heads out there, stainless steel hardware, use anti seize thread lubricant. If you don't do that, your life's going to be hell because you get uh, the metals with being dissimilar will react with each other and then they'll burr and they'll corrode and it'll be stuck together forever. There we go. Let's get, let's change this guy for slant 45 now too. So this one's slightly different. Okay, so this one's Phillips. So we're gonna use a small Phillips. And I think the other one's a Torx. It's uh should say on my bit what size it is. It's a T10, it's a T10 for that. Okay, so we're gonna get in here with the small Phillips. I think that that is a, oh shit, I can't remember the color codes for Phillips. Is it an orange? This guy here is a little bit more complex. See, because the twist lock mechanism is built into there. So now if you look on here, see how that's pointing right there? We need to reorientate that. All right, so now we need to get this bad boy out of here and you'll see underneath that'll show you. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I changing this? And you actually have to change it to match um, because when you change the orientation on this, the locking keys are rotated as well, right? On the outside, the four locking keys. So we need to make sure that that matches up. Let's just see here. This guy out I believe that there's an indicator here if I can't find it you're gonna be real fucked finding it all right here we go so we'll look underneath here and you'll see that there is a key on that right and that key is right there so if we want to rotate it now see how it fits there try to rotate it to see to put this to point over top of that Oh, it's not going down for some reason. Hmm, why would that be? Let's uh, dump our screws here, and now we're gonna break this off. What do I got handy that'll work? Let's just use these uh, Irwin brand vice grips. There, gone. Stick this back on so that the point is going over this instead now. Look at how well that fits. Now we can put the screws back in. Tighten her back up. Just remember, folks, don't fucking crank her. You want her nice and snug. You know, it's good to snuggle, but it's not good to be too aggressive. Uh, you would get in trouble for spousal abuse. There you go. And then this guy can go back on now. Just like so. Whoopsie doodle. I think I'm going to have to carefully balance these. Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? No, the screw's gotta come out. There we go. And let's go up like that. There we go.
brilliant engineering for the idiot monkey brain. So now that she's all done up, then we go here. There we go. Slam 45. So there's another step to this too. Let me, I'm gonna take this one because it's already assembled. So how do you put these guys together now? So you see this? I'm gonna place my hand on here. Boop. All right, so now it comes to the fiddly part. I'm gonna hold this between my legs. Now you all know that this camera is resting between my legs, fairly close to my crotch. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This here is the GPS antenna for the air fiber. So what we want to do here is that tucks in there like that, right? So let's now get this thing organized up top here so it's out of the way. So we're gonna screw it in. I love RF elements. You guys are great. Here we go. Hope I don't get in trouble or fucking tagged for the background music right here, because, uh, you know, we're living in uh, Nazi Germany with fucking YouTube these days. Okay, so we're going to go around. That's going to take up some of the slack here. There we go. And go around a second lap. Yeah. Let's get caught in the rocks. Ah, sorry that you couldn't see that properly. We're going to tuck a little bit of excess in here. And then your antenna goes in there like so. That's your GPS antenna. Now, this just simply goes on there like that. And now mounting the radio. I do believe there is this air fiber clip here. We're using the 5XHDs for this job. Uh, air fiber. There we go, it clicks, and then that locks it. So that's that part. And then you insert the you insert the uh, stiffies into the holes here, and click. Your twist port's on. By the way, do not ignore that, and if you do, and you blow your shit up and send it to us for repair, I will guilt you, and I will tell you about grounding your radios. Count on that. So there you go. That's that one. Now what's the next step here? We haven't got all the stuff on the dishes yet because uh, somebody doesn't have any uh, anti-seize, so they've had to go back to the shop and get the anti-seize. So I'm gonna flip this dish over here. It's a big hole, and this is the knob that goes in the hole. I like to spin it backwards first, just to make sure she's lined up. Cool. That's, uh, so that's in there now. Feed horn. Cool. And as soon as he gets back, I'll be putting the uh, hardware on the back of the thing in the orientation that it's supposed to go in. Yay.